In this video we're going to do a review of the operations on decimals, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So let's start with addition and subtraction. These two guys have the same important rule with addition and subtraction is that you must line up the decimals. Make sure that you do this. Once you have the decimals lined up, then you're just going to add or subtract like normal. Must line up decimals. So for example, for adding, let's say we have 3.875 and we want to add that to 2.5. So what we want to do is make sure that we line up the decimals, 2.5 and 3.875. And if there's spaces here where there's nothing there, you can put zeros in to hold the place if you want. And then you just add like you normally would straight down. So 5 plus 0, 7 plus 0, 8 plus 5 is 13, carry the 1. We have 6. And then you bring the decimal straight down in your answer, 6.375. All right, the same thing is true for subtraction. You have to line up your decimals. So let me write out a problem um, long way. Let's say we wanted to do 6.4 subtract 1.75. So if we're going to do this out, we need to line up our decimals like this, 0.75. Now we've got a spot here, and it's going to be really important to put a zero there because especially in this case we are going to need to borrow we can't take five away from zero so we're gonna have to borrow from the four make it a three one and then ten take away five is five three take away seven I can't do that so I'm gonna have to borrow again thirteen take away seven is six now we bring the decimal straight down and 5 take away 1 is 4, so we end up with 4.65. Now, with multiplication, it's a little bit different, all right? You do not need to line up the decimals with multiplication. With multiplication, you're going to um, arrange the numbers just like you would if you were multiplying and there weren't any decimals. And then I'll show you where to place the decimal in the answer. So let's say we're going to do, how about 3.25 times 1.5 all right so we want we want to line this problem up just like we would if there were no decimals in the problem notice I did not line up the decimals all right you don't need to do that when you're multiplying you're gonna move everything to the far right and multiply like normal okay so if these decimals weren't here if I was just doing 325 times 15 I would do 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. I have 10 plus 2 is 12, carry the 1. 15 plus 1 is 16. Then I go down to the next line, I put a 0, and I multiply with the 1. 1 times 5, 1 times 2, 1 times 3. I add 5, 7, 8, 4. Now, as far as where to place the decimal, you're going to look at your two numbers you were multiplying together and you're going to count the number of places to the right of the decimal. In this case, we've got three total. So our answer needs to have three numbers to the right of the decimal. Therefore, we will place our decimal between the four and the eight. Another good way to check um, if your decimal's in the right place when you're multiplying is to estimate. We've got, this is really close to three and this is really close to one or two. All right, three times one is three. Three times two would be six. So my answer should be, you know, somewhere around between three and six. So 4.875 makes a lot of sense. If I were to put my decimal anywhere else, the answer wouldn't make common sense. If I were to put my decimal here, I'd get 48. All right, that's way too big, 487, right? That doesn't make any sense if I put it here. If I put my decimal over here, I'd get 0.48, something less than 1. That doesn't make any sense because 3 times 1 is 3, so this is going to be bigger than 3. All right, so use your common sense when you're checking your answer and your multiplication. Now with division, uh, let's say we're going to do, um, let's do 3 point 
eight seven five divided by two point five. Let's see how this comes out. All right. Same thing with multi same thing as what you did with multiplication. You kind of want to set this up ignoring the fact the decimals are there. If I was going to do long division on this, I would put the 2.5 out here, and then I would do my division sign, and then put 3.875 in here. Set it up just like multiplication. Set it up like you would if the decimals weren't there. Now, I don't want to figure out how many times 2.5 goes into something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my decimal one place to the right. Actually, you're going to move it however many places you need to to get it to the end of the number. In this case, it's just one. Sometimes you might have to move it twice or three times. And then I'm going to move, since I moved this one, I have to move this decimal one place. Okay. So and then I'm going to take this decimal and I'm going to move it straight up and put it above the line like that. Now I'm going to do my division with the number 25 instead of 2.5. So 25 goes into 38 one time, and I multiply one times 25 and then subtract. All right, then I bring down the next number. 25 goes into 137, what, five times? That would be 125, and then I subtract. Give me 12 and bring down the next number. And 25 goes into 125, five times again, which gives me a zero remainder. So 1.55 is my answer. And again, you can look at the estimating. Does this make sense? How many times will 2.5 go into 3.875? Well, it'll go in once, but it won't go in twice because two 2.5s would make five, not 3.875. So this answer makes sense if we're estimating. All right, again, um, it's kind of the same with fractions. Multiplying and dividing, oops, let me undo that. Multiplying and dividing have a lot of similar rules, as do adding and subtracting. So kind of think of like multiplying and dividing as one thing and then adding and subtracting as another. Adding and subtracting, you have to line up the decimals. Multiplying and dividing, you don't. Multiplying and dividing, you do the multiplication and division like you would if the decimals weren't there and then there's some little rule that helps you figure out where to place the decimal. In the case of multiplication, you can count the number of places to the right and make sure your answer has that many places. In the case of division, you move the decimal so that this number is a whole number and then just move your decimal straight up and do your long division like normal. All right, well, let's, um, let me put up four examples here and if you'd like to take the time to practice that's always a good idea maybe pause the video and try these and then start the video and see how you did so let me put uh, four problems up here let's do 8.3 plus 1.75 for subtraction we'll do 7 minus 3.75 Multiplication, how about 6.2 times 3.25. And division, let's do 5.375 divided by 0 0.25. All right, so pause the video and give those a shot, a try, and then start the video and see how you did. All right, so for addition, we're going to line up our decimals. It really doesn't matter which one goes on the top or the bottom when you're adding. You, you could put the 1.75 on the top and the 8.3 on the bottom. It doesn't matter. Okay, the same's not going to be true when we do the subtraction here. And you can put a zero in here to hold this place. Add straight down. We get 5. We get 10. Carry the 1. Bring your decimal straight down here, we get 10. So the answer is 10.05. Now with subtraction, you do have to have the 7 on the top, oops, edit undo, and the 3.75 on the bottom. Now I kind of did this one to kind of to see if I could uh, make you think a little bit. Where is the decimal when you have a whole number? Just seven. There's no decimal, right? You're supposed to line up your decimals. Where's the decimal? In a whole number, the decimal is always right after, just to the right of the number. So if this was like seven dollars, 
it would be 7.00. So if it's not there, it's to the right of the number. Therefore, I want to put my 3 under my 7, and my decimal is going to go there because I have to have my decimals lined up. So you could fill this in and put 0 .00. You are going to want to put the zeros there because you're going to have to borrow. All right, so let's subtract this, and I'm going to have to do some borrowing. So I got 6, makes that a 10. Borrow again, makes that a 9. Now I'm ready to subtract. So 10 take away 5. 9 take away 7, bring the decimal straight down, and 6 take away 3. All right, hopefully you got that one right. 3.25. Multiplication. Now, I want to line these up like I would if I was multiplying and, the decimal, and there were no decimals. Usually, when you line these up, you're going to put the number with the most digits on the top. So since 3.25 has three digits and 6.2 only has two, it's going to be easier to put the 6.2 on the bottom and do the multiplication. If you put the 3.25 on the bottom, you can do that, but then you have to take five times these and two times these and three times these. It's just a little bit longer. It'll come out, but it's a little longer. So put the number with the most digits on the top. And remember, with multiplication, you don't have to have your decimals lined up. You want to move everything to the far right. So let's see what we get. We get 10, carry the 1, is 4 plus 1 is 5, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now I put a 0, and I do 6 times 5 is 30. So I put a 0 for the 30, carry the 3. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15, carry the 1. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19, and then I'm going to add these together which gives me 0, 5, 11, carry the 1, 10, carry the 1, 2. Where do I place my decimal? I have again 1, 2, 3 digits to the right of the decimal, so I need to do 1, 2, 3 digits to the right of the decimal in my answer. So my answer is 20.150. Now, a lot of times when there's a 0 on the far right at the end, you drop it, and you can just say 20.15. Now, if someone wanted it to the thousandth, you could put the zero on there and be the same thing. All right, division. So now we're going to take and put the 0.25 here and the 3.7, oh, 5.375. You know, we're... If you remember, we're going to have to move this decimal two places. Sometimes I like to move the decimal before I put it in this box situation. So what you can do is you're looking at this. You know this is going to be on the outside. You're going to have to move this two places. That's going to be 25. So you're going to move this two places, and that's going to be 537.5. So you can move that decimal before you put it in the box, and it just kind of makes a little cleaner problem when you write it out. So now I've got 25 on the outside and 537.5 on the inside. 25 goes into 53 twice for 50. Subtract and I get 3. Bring down the 7. 25 goes into 37 only once, and that's going to give me a remainder of 12. Now here's my decimal. I move it straight up. That's where my decimal is going to go in my answer. Bring the next number down. 25 goes into 125 five times with a remainder of zero. Oops, five. So my answer is 21.5. All right, well, I hope, hope that little review of decimals helped. And remember, addition and subtraction, kind of think of those as the same. They have the same kind of rules. And multiplication and division as sharing a lot of the same characteristics as well.